But other than that, you know, if you look at this thing, I mean, there was no spine ticks or anything. It was son of a. Bryce Comics. In this video, we have a CGC unboxing. It's got to be one of my worst submissions yet. Well over 50% rejected. And we're going to talk about just what the heck happened. See if we can extract any lessons about this to become better collectors, investors, and speculators, because that's what this channel is all about. But before we hop too far into it, I want to announce my brand new mystery box, the Amazing Fantasy Bry Box of Mystery. Ooh, I just got chills up my arm on this one. We're giving away an amazing Fantasy 15 in a 1.0 valued at $15,000. Somebody's walking away with that book for $250. Second grand prize is Amazing Spider-Man number one in a 4.0 with a custom label. We also have a giant size X-Men number one in a 9.0 white pages valued at $5,000. That Amazing Spider-Man one's valued at around $11,000. We have Marvel previews number 95 in a 9.8. That's a first consumer facing image of Miles Morales, a super rare Miles Gray rail valued at $5,000. Amazing Spider-Man 252 newsstand 9.8 valued at $2,300. And Amazing Spider-Man 300 in a 9.0 newsstand signed by Todd McFarlane valued around $950. Every single box in this box gets two slabs. Every single box gets a prize slab. So if you don't win one of the six grand prizes, you're guaranteed another prize slab valued somewhere between $40 and $200. $150. So there's 493 additional prize slabs in addition to the grand prizes. Um, and about half of those are valued between 100 and 250. And about half are valued between 40 and 100. I say the average value of those 493 slabs is about $80. Um, but there are a lot of $250 slabs in there as well. The other slab that you're guaranteed is my brand new exclusive for Amazing Spider-Man 26, The Death of Kamala Khan by none other than Gabriel Del Otto. Oh my goodness, we got chills again. I cannot believe, I honestly can't believe that I get to do this for a living. I, these are some of my idols, my childhood idols uh, and adult life idols. Uh, one of my favorite characters in Amazing Spider-Man, one of my favorite artists in Gabriel Del Otto on the title of Amazing Spider-Man for a key issue book. I mean, I am just over the moon with how this turned out. The way Spider-Man is like coming off the page, it looks 3D and his webs there, it's going to be limited to 480 CGC 9.8 or better. This last mystery box, we got 25 99s and 5 10s. So if we get more 99s and 10s this time, we'll also choose the winners for those through random.org. So it's completely above board, 100% random, legit, verifiable, like always. And then I'm going to have 20 virgin editions, making this the rarest Gabriel Del Lotto variant in history. The Amazing Spider-Man 667 1 in 100 variant by Del Otto that sells for like $40,000. That book has 71 total copies on the CGC census, 26 of which are 9.8. So this is going to be much more rare than that. I'm just saying. Um, and so 19 winners are going to get that book plus a prize book. Um, and I'm going to keep one copy for my personal collection because that is the sweetest part about this is these are collectibles that I cherish. I will have this book for the rest of my life. The, my uh, Edge of Spider-Verse 1 by Mirka and Dolfo. And likewise with this Gabriel Del Otto, he's one of my favorite artists. That's what's so cool about these mystery boxes. In addition to all of the value in the, in the prizes, over $75,000 in value is the losing boxes get these epic collectibles. I mean, this is just such a cool time in my life. I can't thank you guys enough for coming along with me for the ride. All of the details are over at brycecomics.com. So let's hop into this unboxing. First, we'll look at the slabs that did make the cut that got the 9.8. And then we'll look closely at the raw books that were rejected and see if we can figure out why they were rejected and go from there. 
All right, so starting off with the slabs that made the cut, and then we'll go over the raw books here in detail. I did a 9.8 pre-screen on these books, and that may have been where my mistake lied with this submission. We'll talk more about uh, pre-screen and when to do it, when not to do it. Did I totally screw up this time here in just a minute? But this is the sweetest book of the whole batch, Marvel Age number 12. This is the first appearance of the black suit Spidey concept submitted by Randy and this predates Amazing Spider-Man 252. This is a must-have for any black suit Spidey collector and this was the first you know somewhat big book that I found when digging through the long boxes. I thought you know is this thing a 9.8 and sure enough it is a 9.8 so this one's really sweet. I've always loved this book and this thing is, is absolutely perfect. And then we also have Batman 655 the first appearance of Damien in Cameo in a 9.8 we have Darth Vader number one in a 9-8, the first appearance of Black Kersantan, the first solo Darth Vader. Spider-Man number one, Silver Edition. Civil War two number one, uh, the negative space variant by John Tyler Christopher. Punisher number 218, second print in a 9-8. Absolutely love this book. It's in my personal collection. Amazing Spider-Man 4, uh, Cindy Moon Becomes Silk in a 9.8 and Batman 657 the first cover appearance of Damien so that's it for the 9.8s I think the value of those right there is somewhere around eleven $1 hundred dollars and then minus the you know shipping and the grading fees and now the reject fees I got done recording this entire video and I thought wait what is going on here I thought that this submission was like 80% rejected because when I first looked at the results from CGC I saw that it was like 80% rejected and I got done filming this video and I thought there should be way more books in this but I had waited two weeks to do this video and I was just sitting there and I'm going man what is going on with this I kind of have a lot going on right now at the shop but it just was in the back of the mind that I was missing a bunch of books so I go and check and sure enough an entire box of books is stuck in transit. If you go over here to uh, the shipping, it was shipped on 526, today is 611. So it's been a couple weeks now that it's just completely stuck in transit. So it's possible that I won't even ever see these books. There might be more to this story. This wouldn't be the first time that FedEx actually lost an entire box of 25 books from CGC on the side of the highway. Those that have been following the channel know that I did a whole video about that. Some uh, guy actually found a box of my slabs, 25 books on the side of the road. It fell off the FedEx truck. So that could be part of the story for this one. We'll see if these ever actually show up. But here you can see of the 25 books from the $100 long box collection, almost all of these are rejected. I mean, we got one, two, three, four, five, six out of 25 um, that actually got the 9-8. All the rest of them are rejected. I'll be curious to see what's going on with these books. Is Did they all get damaged somehow? Or the, do they all have bent corners? That's a possibility. Or um, is it just more of the same that you're about to see in this video of, you know, just minor things that they missed the 9-8 cut? So keep this in mind. There was, in fact, uh, quite a few more books that were missing uh, that you're about to see in the unboxing. So here's the first raw book that was rejected. And remember, I'm now $88 in the hole on just reject fees, not to mention the shipping of these books back and forth. So the question is, why use pre-screen? Should I have just had them graded with no pre-screen and, and seen what they come back as? Well, I think there's a lot of psychology behind pre-screen. And, you know, I think that when you do a pre-screen 9-8, in this case, the psychology worked against me where they were like, this guy doesn't know how to pick 9.8, obviously, and they maybe, you know, look at it with more scrutiny. Whereas with a bunch of modern books, if you have a whole bunch of modern books and you do 9.8 pre-screen and most of them are 9.8s, I think you could, you know, slip by a few questionable 9.8s because they're just in the mode of saying, oh yeah, this guy knows what a 9.8 is. This whole thing is pretty much 9.8. So there's some psychology behind it. Then the financial behind it, if all of these did come back less than 9.8, you know, I'd be selling them basically just to break even. There's the additional cost of the grading it's about $13 more to just go ahead and get it graded rather than have it rejected so 
I, I think it's about the same in this situation of what I could sell these for raw if I were to sell them graded less than 9A. So I think it's about the same in this case, but I kind of wish I didn't use pre-screen because these would have been great giveaway books. So here, let's see if we can find out what it was. So obviously there's a finger dent there. You know, whether or not that was there when I sent it in is the big question. You know, there's another little finger dent there. I mean, I certainly, I pressed these. I certainly would not have submitted it if it looked like that. So the question is, did it revert back after I sent it in? And that is entirely possible that I pressed it out and then there was some reversion. But as you can see, this thing is really sharp. And if we look at the spine, the spine is really sharp on this thing as well. So I really think it's just that little finger bend right there that caused this one to miss the 9.8. Next up we have Batman 457. And this is one that I said, you know, I've never found this book in a 9.8 in a raw book collection. Let's take a look if we can see any finger bends. This thing looks really, really sharp. Let's take a close look at the spine. I don't see any ticks on the spine. I mean, this thing is really sharp. Maybe a little tick right there, but it's not color breaking. And a little bit of spine stress is allowed in 9.8. This was the big area that I had trouble with and that I pressed out, but it looks fine. I mean, that's, that's a, allowable in a 9.8. It's not like a color breaking thing. And then if we look on the back, uh, there is one color breaking tick right there, but that's allowed in a 9.8 to that degree. I mean, that's, I've seen much worse than that in a 9.8. This is one that I would be curious to see what it comes back as when I get it regraded. So Spider-Man 1 here, I just looked it over. I don't see anything wrong with this. This thing is totally sharp no spine ticks whatsoever um i will be surprised I, I think i'm going to resubmit this and we'll see we'll see what that comes back as the second time so make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see the second round of this we'll see if i can make a video out of it so this one there is a little bit of a bindery tear at the bottom but that's not severe enough i don't think to hold it back from getting the 9.8. Um, I've definitely seen them, you know, that bad or worse and still get a 9.8. It does depend on the book. Like this book is gonna allow for less of a bindery tear than this one. I'll show you here in just a minute. This one allows a huge bindery tear. This is actually a perfect example of the difference. So this one is definitely borderline for that bindery tear. But other than that, you know, if you look at this thing, I mean, there was no spine ticks or anything. Was, Son of a! And if we look on the back, there is definitely a spine tick right there that I certainly don't remember being there when I sent it in. I, I probably wouldn't have pre-screened 9.8 this book if it looked that bad, so. But what can you do? So this is one that I actually would not submit as a 9.8 pre-screen because of that spine tick on the back. All right, let's look at this one. This is a book that has, uh, this is the one in 50 for the first cameo of Cindy Moon, brand new book, super, super sharp. And this is one that is a super thick book, like really thick. It has like a whole extra comic in it, Inhumans number one. So because of that, there's really bad bindery tears at the bottom of the book, as you can see there. And this is 100% allowed in this book, 100% of the time to that degree, because I have graded a lot of these over the years and it always is allowed in a 9.8 to have a bindery tear that big at the top and the bottom. So that wouldn't be what holds this book back. Another thing you need to worry about with this one is this may have been the cause there that is, you know, a printing defect, a little crease. I definitely think this could have got a 9.8, but that would probably be the thing that holds it back. You also have to worry about color touch with this because it's such a thick book pulling it in and out of the bag 
is is a worry. I'm going to resubmit that one. I wouldn't be surprised if that one came back a 9.8 the second time. So here's another copy. This is the J. Scott Campbell version of the same book. And as you can see, it's really sharp. No finger bends or anything on the cover. Definitely has the bindery tears at the top and the bottom. Um, but again, this is allowed to that degree for this book. So this one has the same type of defect right there, which is interesting because it's on a completely different cover. Um, so that's why I think that's a little strange that they rejected those. That's usually allowed um, in to that degree. Moon Knight 188, first appearance of the Sun King. Son of a gun. All right, so this is definitely not how I submitted it, all right? So this is from, it's very simple to say how that happens. You have the book in a, a short box and they slouch and that causes a bit of a slouch, causes dents right there. See that? <laughs> That's what that is, I'm doing it very lightly. I think that can be pressed out, uh, but that is a handling thing, you know, maybe it was pulled out of a box. Also, if you have it in, in a box and you pull the book out to look at it, that's a very common thing. That causes spine stress like that. This book also has a little bit of color rub by the staples, but a little bit of color rub is allowed in a 9.8. And there's another defect there that, you know, I don't remember it being like that. It almost looks like this book, you know, was maybe it was dropped or like pulled out wrong. Who knows, it's also entirely possible that I missed that. I, I'll, I'll put that out there as, as a, a possibility. This is just an awesome Gabriel Del Otto cover for Vengeance number five. So this one has two um, non-color breaking stress marks on the spine here. That's borderline and questionable. I mean, I can see why that would get uh, rejected for the 9.8. I have also seen 9.8s. I've had one um, in my personal collection before with a white spine like this that had like six of those and it still got the 9.8. So that's kind of a toss up. I'm not going to risk it again with that book. It's not a huge book. It was just a cool cover I thought it would be awesome in a 9.8, but uh, I'm not going to try to submit that one again. All right, so this book definitely has a lot of pressable defects. Whether or not these were incurred before or after, I'm not sure. It's possible that, you know, this reverted after I pressed it out. There's two, you know, non-color breaking stresses there. And then down in this corner, there's a non-color breaking bend. And then here, there is some non-color breaking stress as well. So. You know, I'm not going to resubmit that book again. We'll just sell it raw as is. So this book here is an awesome Wolverine cover. Marvel Comics Presents number one. It does have, that's not a little bit, that's a, a full on tick there and there. I mean, I certainly would not have submitted it if like that. I mean, I, I screened these, I looked at these and I'm not, I definitely wouldn't have submitted it like that. All right, so for this copy here of Batman 655, this thing is really sharp. No finger bends or anything on the front cover. No spine ticks whatsoever along the spine, but I did find a defect right there that that is probably something I missed. That, that's like a printing or manufacturing or distribution defect. I'll try to get that out and submit it again. So. You know, some of these books here, I, I think one, two, three of these four rejects, I think, you, you know, incurred some kind of damage along the way. I mean, it happens. You know, these are incredibly delicate and we're shipping them across the country and someone's taking them out of a box, putting them in another box. These ones here, I think, are were kind of harsh. Um, I'd like to try and resubmit some of those for 9.8s. So let's turn the camera around and do some takeaways. So let's do some quick takeaways about this. Takeaway number one, it's always a risk when you send your comics through the mail, whether it's to CGC or anything. These are incredibly fragile and just, you know, even if there's no apparent damage to the outside of the box, books can still get damaged. Mistakes happen, so it is a risk. I don't think it's enough of a risk to never submit books to CGC. I think it's just something that you should 
you know, consider pack things like a tank, especially it's a little different if we're talking about very important personal grails of yours or very expensive books versus like run of the mill stuff. The second takeaway, if you're doing this on a smaller scale, if you know, you don't submit to CGC all the time, take pictures of your books front and back before you submit them. When you're doing it on a scale such as mine, it's not feasible to take pictures. Uh, I recently had a submission that was 100% rejected, 25 books all rejected, and when I got the books back in hand, they were clearly damaged. And I reached out to CGC and I said, hey, what's the deal? Like, can you at least refund me the pre-screen reject fee, the $8 per book? Because obviously, if you look at my account, like I don't submit stuff that's not 9 eighths. like these are 100%, they were damaged, it's clear that they were damaged. And they said, well, do you have pictures of the books before you sent them in? And I said, no, of course not. I mean, I send in so many books, it's literally not feasible for me to take pictures and why would I? These are run of the mill uh, books. And they said, well, sorry, there's nothing we can do. So if you're doing it on a small scale, take pictures of your books before you send them in. The other takeaway here is when you're using CGC pre-screen, it's definitely a valuable tool to have if you absolutely don't want that book in anything but a 9.8. There's a lot of cases, mostly modern books, where that makes the where that makes sense. I mean, there's some books that in anything less than a 9.8 might sell for like 15 or 20 dollars, and in that case, just take the eight dollar rejection fee. If they're a little bit more valuable books than that, like and or some of these books, just take your rose-colored glasses off and ask yourself, what is the lowest grade you would be happy with? Would you be happy with a 9.2? Um, you know, what is the lowest grade that you're happy with? And either set that as your pre-screen grade or just use no pre-screen at all. Play the tape through in your head and say, okay, if this doesn't get a 9.8 and it's a rejected raw, am I gonna wish that I had it in a 9.2, 9.4, 9.6? .9 so stay tuned for a future video where we wrap the whole $100 long box thing up. We'll go over numbers and stuff now that we're almost done with the numbers and I can break it all down in one video. You know, the cost of buying and selling a collection, profits and all of that. We're getting a lot of cool data with all of this. Thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video. Don't forget we have a monthly giveaway if you subscribe, comment, and like. And head over to BriceComics.com and sign up for the newsletter for your chance to win a free slab each and every month. Get first access to new mystery boxes like the Amazing Fantasy Bride Box of Mystery, which is live now at BriceComics.com. Use code COLLECT10 for 10% off all in-stock items. Thanks again for sticking with me to the end. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Bryce Comics. You know, if you look at this thing, I mean, there was no spine ticks or anything. It was son of a. No, now that at definitely was not there. There's no way. Okay, hold on. Let me reel it in. Ah. <sighs>